Hi, it's Jess here from Lanchester.co.uk. Thank you for joining me. So this is part two of my traveller's notebook. So in part one, um, I made this um, lovely purple uh, TN and it does fit and match or, or go lovely in my actual um, uh, TN. And um, I wanted to have like a portable cover with it so I could just take that bit out and it not get spoiled. So this was my prototype that I that I made and it's laminated and um, and it holds my prototype TN. So I'm going to make this again. Um, of that paper, I've only got scraps left. So I've got this sheet and um, some offcuts from these pages. So I'm actually going to make it in cardstock and then mat these sheets and some of the other offcuts on it. So these are the measurements that you need. So because of the measurements, you need a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock using a Whisper White. And if I just flip this, I'll show you how I worked it out. And it was the same way as I worked out my mini um, TN. So I looked at it and it is eight and a quarter tall. So I want a quarter inch at the top and the bottom. So we want it eight and three quarter inches tall. Width wise, it's just under four and a half so we're going to make it four and a half wide and then we want a little spine of half an inch on my prototype I didn't do the spine and it does come out a little bit so um, and it worked really well on the mini so that's why we're going for that so I'm going to cut this at nine and a half by eight and three quarters and then we're going to score at four and a half and five so there we have it, nine and a half by eight and three quarters. And we want to score at four and a half. And I'm just going to flip it and score again at four and a half, just in case there was any slight um, being out um, with those measurements. So that's can turn over now and get rid of my mucky side. So I'm just going to fold and burnish this. And some of you might now be able to work out that you can't laminate this with an A4 laminator. You're going to need A3 to, to do that. So that is the basic... the basic setup of my TN cover there. Okay, so now I want to decorate it because white's a little bit boring and we have some nice DSP. It's also a little bit flimsy. Yes, it will, the lamination will, will thicken it up, but I'm gonna add a bit now. Okay, so I've cut my mats. Um, so I've cut some Highland Heather cardstock. That's eight and a quarter by four. So that mats nicely on the front cover. And then I've gone for the stripy DSP. I'm not really a pink person. Um, so that is eight by three and three quarters. Same on the back. Stripes are going the other way just because of the... Um, the piece of cardstock, uh, piece of uh, DSP that I had left, but I think that's okay. And then on the inside cover, I want to put um, a pocket. So with this purple stuff, I think that goes really nice um, with that there. It's the same shape flowers are on there, it's the same colour. And this is going to be interchangeable and I can use it with other TNs. So um, it's four and a half wide and I've just come back a sixteenth. OK, so I'm going to cut that to show you. So these are just from the off cuts I had. So I'm going to go up to four and a half and then just back a sixteenth to get the right width to go in there. Obviously, it's much taller than I actually want it. So that fits nicely in there. So that allows 
for the crease. So I want this pocket to sort of slant down a bit. So I'm just going to kind of judge it by there. And yeah, that's what I want. So I'm going to use that as a template against this one. I'm going to turn it over because I want the slant in the other direction. So just placing that along the trimmer. There we go. And that's my two pockets for the cover. So they're going to get stuck down as are the mats on the outside um, before I decorate it. So I'll just get that done. Right, so now we're going to do the decoration. I'm going to do it exactly the same. I just really like the look of that. So the sentiment comes from peaceful moments. These are the moments we will look back on with joy. I've got some Highland Heather and I'm going to use the Stitch So Sweetly dies. And we're going to cut that one out in Highland Heather and we'll cut the sentiment out in that one. OK, and then the little flowers come from this punch here. So we'll punch that out of the scrap when we're done. So you might notice when I was doing this that I've chosen for those stripes in that direction to be on the front. It's what appealed to me the most. Who doesn't love purple? I love it. So that's that. So then we're going to just die cut those out. So there they are, die cut out. And they do nest in each other beautifully. And um, oh, I, need, I was going to cut a purple flowers, but actually the white ones will look better, won't they? So I just... Come in here and cut myself a couple of flowers. A few for luck because they go flying everywhere, as just happened, and I often lose one. Now, if I wasn't laminating this, I would then also put a nice little gem in the middle, but we don't need one. It won't work, but we have got these beautiful gems. They would look lovely, wouldn't they? Pearls, even. So um, we're just going to glue those down. OK, so I still think they need a little bit something inside. So there is a tiny flower here. So I thought. Let's see what it looks like if I cut. A little flower. And pop it in the centre. Yes. I think I like that. I think I've slightly mispunched that. Let's try again. Because I haven't got my glasses on, I couldn't quite see. There. Yes. That looks like a fully formed flower. Okay, I'll get them stuck in. 
Okay, so that's that done. And I'm going to laminate it. If you haven't got a laminator, then um, you would just have to have it like this, but it won't be so robust. Okay, so I'll get that laminated. So there we have it all laminated. And um, I don't know, if you've got a laminator, um, you might need to run it through twice. That's what I did, because the first time I ran it through, it didn't stick quite so well down the spine but now that is beautifully stuck and it was a little bit not quite stuck around here but it's all good now so i'm just gonna trim it down i'm gonna use my trusty old guillotine for this so i'm gonna you do get a slight a slight sort of ridge so i'm gonna cut it not quite, I'm going to cut it with a bit of a margin. You can always take some more off, but you can't put it back on. So, cut that down. And then finally. So, I think that's okay. Yeah, and so it should now fold fairly easily because it was already sort of scored. So we should have no problems with it folding at the spine there. And and we didn't. So we've got quite a nice tough cover there. So although there wasn't any extra cardstock on the spine, it's got two layers of laminate. So it should be okay. It's pretty, I like it. So now we've got these pockets. So we've got to just slit that. So I'm using a metal ruler and my craft knife. And as you just got to gently do this, you just want to go through the laminate. And I don't know if you can see, but there's kind of a, that bit there, it's not stuck. Because this is slightly raised than that, you've got an area there when it's not stuck. So that's the area that you're cutting into. I can put my glasses on. And I just do gentle little strokes. My head might get in the way. I apologize if it does. Gentle little strokes. Down that bit. And you can kind of hear when you've gone through the laminating folder. And you want to make sure you don't go through the cardstock and that. It's just cut in there. I might do a little bit more towards the top. We're all right there. Just need a little bit at the top. There you go. So that's a nice little pocket, which I think is quite a nice little addition, a little touch. There, we do the same on this side. Now, when I did this on my mini TN, first side went lovely. Second side, not so much. Cooking on gas. Look at that. There we go. So that's my little whiskey bottle cork. Let's stick that in. So now what we need to do is take your glasses off, Jess, so you can actually see. Um, so now we need to make the make some holes to attach this with. And I am going to put holes with my cropper dial and I've done it so that I can put my holes in at the top there and there's a nice lot of room so here's my cropper dial I'm gonna do it on the smaller hole so you have um, uh, uh, a 1 8 or a 3 16 I'm going for the 1 8 and I'm just going to Eyeball that to be in the middle. There we go. And then at the other end, 
like so and that should be beautifully placed for putting the elastic in to hold this in place now you could put some eyelets in there if you've got one of these in an eyelet setter i'm going to do it because i've got one but it's laminated i shouldn't think it would rip so in my big stash of eyelets i've got some little purple ones that's what i'm gonna use because i think they'll be cute so i just need two of those for now so just gonna put one of them in like so and then squeeze it down I've had my proper dial years it was at the time a considered a purchase now I would just buy one because I need one <laughs> It's not, it's like, yeah, I don't think anything about spending like 30 quid on a piece of craft equipment at all nowadays. There we go. But back then it was just a hobby and, um, and now it's my job. So there is a little bit of a difference. So I've got some elastic. I didn't have the elastic when I started filming this, but it's arrived in the post. So that's lucky. So... I've ordered black. I thought I ordered white, but there you go. It'll do. It'll do. So I'm just going to thread this through there and through there. I just got this on eBay before anybody asks. Um, I searched for loads and I wanted something thin. So they come in different widths. Can't remember the millimetre of this. Might have been three. Let's have a look. That's centimetres anyway. Oh, it was in millimetres, wasn't it? The two. This looks like two millimetres. So you want it fairly tight because we want it to hold hold it quite quite tightly so might even do less than that there's probably some maths that you go like one and a half times or something but I don't know the math so I'm just trial and error me And what's really difficult when tying elastic like this is you need like 65 million hands really. So that'll do, that'll do. I can adjust later if need be. So, there we go, and that's quite tight, so this will now slip in. If you wanted to have more than one booklet in it, then you would have to make your spine a little bit bigger to fit another one, but that works really well there holds it in it's quite tight so now it's just a matter of a fastening now on like midori style ones you have some elastic coming out of the center and it going over like that which is what i thought i would do on my mini one i put two eyelets there and had it tied in a bow but i think i'm going to go for the the elastic because it's much easier to get it in and out so we need to make a hole in there now i've got big bite which is the um, big brother of the uh, 
of the copper dial and that allows you to reach in there and put a hole in there so I'm going to do that so this is my big bite this was my birthday present so I'm going to go for somewhere in the middle there is a measurer here so you can work out where the middle is by measuring and uh, it measures this is centimeters 23 so half of 23 is 11 and a half there are no centimeters on this so i'll have to do it in inches marvelous so so it's basically nine inches so I wanted to go to four and a half. I think it was at four. It wasn't quite at four and a half. So. All right. There's different measures if you've got one of these. So there is measures for the big hole and measures for the little hole. And they tell you on here which one. I'm going for the eighth inch. So it's that side that I want to push to four and a half. I was almost there. So that's at four and a half. So that should now be in the right place. Maybe should have done this before I put this elastic on, but hey ho. You know what thought did. So that's my hole. That's my hole done. And now the eyelet. So I'm going to stick another eyelet in. So we'll go for another one of these that worked really well cordon damn it there we go put that in there oh. Let's pull my elastic out of the way And just like the copper dial, you've got the bits for holding this in place. So you just need to slide that all the way so that it's the front bit going down. I've got it, I would have it set on the wrong one. It's set for the big eyelet. So. And this is where you need push that down and that's my eyelet set nicely in the middle there you go not essential but that is what i chose to have for my birthday so now what we need to do is, so we're going to double over our elastic and have it coming through in a knot, but we want it to come out and go all the way over, but be quite tight at the same time. feels about right so tie a knot I've bought some little silicon things that um, you can use to tighten up But I haven't got my head around them yet. Well, to be fair, they arrived before me elastic. So didn't really didn't really have a chance. So now I've got to hope that this doubled over will go through my eyelet. With the help of a pokey tool, 
and my tweezers think we're cooking on gas yes marvelous so let's try it before we snip it off let's feed that through feed that over yeah that works that works happy with that so i can just snip that off other people may have better ways of doing this this is my way this is literally the second time i've done it <laughs> but it seems to work so that's that's it that is the cover for my my little tn so i think that's worked a lot better than my prototype i think it's better to have a little spine and um, I made that slightly wider and um, I need to replace the elastic on this. Um, but yeah, I quite like it. I may eventually buy some white elastic and I will change it then when I buy my my white elastic. So so that's so that's that. Yeah. So I decided that it needed a few little finishing touches. I kind of looked at it and went, well, do you know what? I probably would want some tags in the pocket and i was thinking about doing some stenciling or something on the page and then i thought well, why don't i just punch the corners to match so that's what i've done so i just added these little tags so i thought i can do some stamping on these once i'm recording something in it or put some photos um whatever i want or not use them you know i've just put them in there to be used or not used as I wish. I decided to leave these without, but I can easily make some more if 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 I choose to. Um, I've edged the pockets using the ornate um, layers. Borders? Borders. Um, but they're not long enough for that, so I just used a few scraps that I had. And I quite like the look of that in there. Uh, so... Uh, so yeah, that's what I've done. On pages like this, I couldn't punch. So I use this as a template and just um, um, inked to, to give the same, the same effect. And um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what I decided to do. Really, not. I think it just needed that to sort of finish them off. And, um, and these are, these are, uh, uh, got ink blended because although I could have uh, punched that one that was the only one I could have punched because these have got pockets at the bottom so that end couldn't be punched so I just felt that that was um, the best way of doing that so I've got one tag left um, to do here we go so I've just used whisper white and I've used the off cuts from from the pages um, to make this and the tags measure seven and a half let's see if i've remembered this correctly they measure seven and a half inches by three and a half and then these measure six and three quarters by um it's just under Three. it is two and seven eighths and that was kind of what I went for it was just that's what gave me economically the best um, result so I used this uh, trio punch to just round the corners so not done anything fancy on them I didn't want to turn this into a huge major product pro project but I just felt it needed a little bit of something else and it's the sort of thing that as I'm filling it I'll probably add other things to it and I may even make some different tags um, 
you know, depending depending on what I wanna what I wanna put in it. So I could have chosen either side. That's the I am loving this red cabbage dye. We don't have red cabbage very often, but when we do, it's for a particular recipe and um, we never use it all. So I went, oh, I've always wanted to try red cabbage dyeing paper and I couldn't believe that it came such a beautiful shade of purples and blues. Who knew? So it's like avocado. Dying paper with avocado. You'd think it'd be green, wouldn't you? It's pink. Lovely shade of pink. So, uh, so yeah. Like to experiment. And you get cheap, cheap coloured paper. Don't know where my bone folder is. I like to rub my bone folder along to get a nice... I can't see it. Oh, there we go, reach back. Just like to run it over, smooth it out. And that's that. So... I just think that gives it a nice little little finish to it. So quite pleased with that. So I hope you've stuck with me through all the, the episodes. And um, I'll say I like the result. I was going to put some in there, but I haven't... Um, I couldn't decide so I thought I'll leave it as it is so that's it so everything will be linked down below that I used in the making of this um, traveler's notebook and um, pictures on my blog and um, I'll link to all the other episodes as well so that you um, can make one yourself if you want to okay see you all again soon bye